Now lately I've been on my channel, I have been seeing recommendations and people sending me messages to review certain shows and certain movies that have been coming out recently, or just certain movies and shows that came out back then, and people have been asking for my feedback about it and just been going back and forth. Are you going to review this? Are you going to review that? Come on, please, 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 let me know if you're going to do it. Please, please, please. Here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. I looked at my channel. And I looked through my collection and I noticed I am lacking a lot of anime material, okay? And it is crazy because I love anime with a passion and I have more animes in my collection than movies. It's been proven. If you haven't seen my show and tell video, I'll put it in my um, subscription box. And what makes matters worse, it make what, what makes things a little bit hypocritical for me is because I only have 10 animes that are reviewed on my channel. No that is ridiculous. Side to side and a rhythmic break, 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 break. What's going on guys? TCT here. The reason why I have to say that at the beginning of the video is because I am lacking a lot of anime material and I need to be more focused on my anime reviews and my video game reviews. I got like over 70 movie reviews, probably more than that, and I, I'm going to have to lay off that for a while. I might do a couple more shows and movie reviews pretty soon, but we'll have to just see what, what, how it goes. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. Kurosuka is an anime, Japanese animation, that was by Madhouse and was published by the Japanese television that is called Animax that was that happened I guess in 2008 if I'm not mistaken. In the 12th century Japan a legendary swordsman Minamoto no Yoshitsune Kuro and his servant Benkai meet a woman named Kuromitsu while on a run from Kuro's elder brother who seeks his life. Kuromitsu and Kuro fall in love but soon discovers that she harbors a terrible secret. She is a vampiric immortal. Kuro Kuromitsu. Kuro Kuromitsu. Even though the names are similar, I didn't really have no problem with it because when it comes to animations in Japanese or Korean films in general, it's, it's kind of hard to remember the names of the characters due to the fact that the names can be, you know, just hard to pronounce. But Kuromitsu and Kuro, even though they sound similar, I did not mind it at all. Now, I came across this anime through a box set that I have purchased um, in one of my favorite stores which is called Disc Replay. It's one of the anime collection series and one of the main three. So I'm planning on reviewing two of them pretty soon. But um, after watching this 12 episode series, I'm gonna have to say it's pretty good. Pretty phenomenal, pretty straightforward, lacks some stuff that I'm gonna be explaining soon. But at the same time, it was acceptable for, for the package that they, that they have given us. The story doesn't drag at all. It gets right down to the nitty gritty, gets right down to the point. Kuro, Me Too, and Kuro all fall in love with each other and they begin to show their bond when it comes to their attachments, what they love about each other the most. But at the same time, they're, they're a little bit distant when it comes to explaining why they have deep impact with each other's emotions. And for a story that does not pussyfoot around when it comes to the things getting in place, it's going to be guilty with that. If it's not going to be guilty with the pacing, it's going to be guilty with the dialogue. If it's not going to be guilty with the dialogue, it's going to be guilty with the chemistry of the characters. And with, with Kurazuka, it lacks all those aspects. And that's what, that's what makes this show weak in, in, in all terms. Now, I will say this. The character development with Kuro... I like his character. His character was well warranted. I believe the drive of his character, especially when things get bad. In fact, when he meets Kuromitsu, Love at First Sight, I believed it. I believed his character and I believed the motivation of how he felt with her. Because let's just face it here. People will say that love takes time, love, love is this, I'm, I need to meet you and so we can do certain things. But by me being a mental therapist, I believe that love is you know, you meet somebody, they meet you, you fall in love, and that's it. And then, when it, and then with the show, it explains that in a way that is acceptable. I just wish that the pacing of us getting to know them more and their bond was, you know, was more acceptable. Even though it was lacking the pacing of them falling in love, 
I will say that Kurumitsu and Kuro's love is indeed heartwarming. They will show some certain scenes where they would go out, well not out on dates, but just wander around certain areas of where they live and just to show how good the environment looks and shows how good the artwork is and stuff and i like environmental stuff like this i mean i i love animes that, that would just show you the beauty and the art material of what the anime holds and i have the dvd version and it was kind of i was kind of itching to buy the blu-ray version if they have it i have to look but I feel like if they if they had the material to do that, did I think the pacing of the character development would have been better? Because when things get bad, when Kuro actually loses Kuro Mitsu, when he actually loses contact with her, and shit gets bad, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm 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 going to say this: with a vampire love story, like um you know like Twilight or Castlevania. Or oh, what's the one? Um, I think Queen of the Damned, or what? I don't, I forgot which one it was. It's not the one with the with Aaliyah, but when, but but when it comes to a lot of vampiristic stories like this, when it comes to a vampire falling in love with a with a mortal character, they're gonna eventually become a vampire, and that's what happened to Kuro. So him being immortal, her being immortal, it ended up coming a collision course of him knowing who she really is. Who is Kuramitsu? And he is he isn't finding out that she's a very fucking dangerous woman. And I like that about her character because even though she's kind-hearted, she's a very nice character, beautiful character as well. There were some times where it would show her dark side. There were times where she would have to fight, and she's a badass fighter. And there were some times where bandits or just bad guys would just come to where they live and just try to ransack the place, and she would literally just go ballistic like a, and, it, and it would give me like horror movie vibes there were times i would just jump out of my seat like what the fuck like is this the okura me too so i love that drive with that character but i felt like it was lacking a lot of material of how she ended up becoming who she was and when they explained it it was very brief to the point where i just did not buy it and i was not intertwined with the believement of how they was explaining it because it was so fast paced with both of the character developments into the story Talking too much about the love, talking too much about the dialogue. Let's talk about the violence. The anime is violent as hell. Bloody, gory, freaking badass, freaking intense. Every episode, people die. <laughs> if it ain't one, then it's a lot of them. If it ain't a lot of them, then it's a horde of them. And I love that about this anime. The anime violence is great, and I love violent animes. This anime has a lot of good violent material, you know, material decapitation. People get shot because when things get bad with Kuro, when he's trying to find Kuro Mitsu, the, like the, the whole story takes place hundreds of years later. So he's not into the Ronin age of the samurai shonen um, era of the early hundreds. He's in this day and age now, and he's still looking for Kuro Mitsu because he was in a coma or something and he awakened and now he's trying to find her and he's so confused of just where he's at buildings and stuff cars driving past him he's so used to riding horses so it took a while for his character to be intertwined with the environment that he's in but when this came along so did the violence so because we because we got so used to the samurai action and they still got that here with the new generation but they switched it up with gunplay mutation a whole lot of shit and I love that about this anime but again it was lacking a lot of pacing material of just when he awoken it just happened so frequently you would think that they would explain how he well they did explain it but it was so brief because they want to be more focused on things happening in front of him than behind him but I feel like the story would be more stronger if they had more meat on how it happened how to cure me to get kidnapped and just the criminology of just how things are going to take place and how and why they both are so intertwined with each other. The, the anime, and I'm going to say this, the anime will confuse you because of the lacking of explaining itself. So I will recommend saying watch it a couple times if you got time like that, but I feel like the more you watch it, you're still going to feel on a fence of just knowing that the anime is very fast paced when it comes to you trying to understand what the fuck is going on. You may get it, especially when you already watch the anime, because you already understand it after you watch it from start to finish. 
but as for you putting pieces together when you got confused from the get-go you only got confused because it was so fast-paced and it was lacking explanation with the material of the character development and the pacing as well now the introduction of the anime well not introduction but just the beginning of the anime it gives you the previews of the what happens before the episode so just in case if you got lost and if you haven't watched it they will show you what happened previously and I like that because a lot of anime don't even do that anymore they you know you watch it and they already just shows you what's what's going on in this in, in this current episode but Kuazuka they shows you what happens but you know what happened previously so you can get intertwined back and get hooked back into the show and what I like about it is when they show this they give you that Ronin drum vibe that type of stuff and I was getting a lot of Shugurai Death Frenzy vibes and now y'all know how much I love Shugurai Death Frenzy when I hear stuff like that I be on edge and the anime look here's the thing the anime does right when it comes to the material of the soundtrack I love the soundtrack of the introduction good rock and roll pace it starts off slow um, it gives you that. It gives you that Kanye West um, going to jail. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like I think the song is called "Going to Jail Tonight." Vibe. Soon as the song starts, you would know what I'm talking about when you hear the introduction of this of of this anime. But the introduction is just as good. It's not as fast paced and rock and rollish as the, as the introduction, but it's more of a pianic, more of a of a, of a chill sit back of what you witness through the episode because like I said there's a lot of blood and gore <laughs> so at the end of the day the anime is good the anime is acceptable the anime would not let you down but at the same time these are the two aspects of the anime that you need to be prepared for if you're gonna watch it just so you can be intertwined with the characters because they got some good side characters as well that I fell for and that I liked but due to the pacing, due to the dialogue, due to the chemistry, the lacking of all three, you're gonna know you're gonna know enough to be aware of their presence, but you're not gonna know enough to care about any of them. Inclu you know, including I'm gonna have to say it, the main Kuro. But if you want to watch it to get entertained, you will not be sorry. But I'm <laughs> it's hard for me to give you a big recommendation because there are better animes out there like Castlevania and any other other vampire animes that, that replicates this, but does it a lot better. I'm gonna have to give Kurazuka a B minus. I was thinking about giving it a C, but I only give animes a C is if 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 it's really average, but the anime is not average, it does everything right except those main three that I mentioned. So it's not really boring, it's not really lackluster, but when it comes to the criminology of the character development and the dialogue and the pacing, it could have been done better. But the reason why I gave it another hit, the reason why I gave it another like um, pass is because it's only 12 episodes. So it's kind of tough for animes to squeeze all that material into a 12 episode loop. Do this anime continue with the manga? I don't know, I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Well, that's all I have to say for today. Please stay tuned for more of my upcoming reviews and videos. Hit it your way. This is Hugo, <laughs> your critic teacher, and you guys have a good day.